Hi guys, my name is Michelle and I create hair, makeup and lifestyle content here on YouTube. Today I wanted to share with you one of my styling routines. It's going to be super excessive, I'm not going to lie. The steps are going to be a little bit much, but if you have high porosity hair, you're struggling to retain moisture, or if your products are too light for you and you're not able to stretch your wash days, you're not able to stretch out the results that you get, if you're losing curl definition very easily, then this uh, styling routine is gonna help you. So this is like a mixture of log, and I don't know what to call this. Um, I haven't seen this routine out there, it's just something that I started doing to help with my frizz and as you will agree the frizz is totally minimal today. If you're curious to know my entire product lineup and exactly what I used for this wash day then you'll find all that information in the description so please check that out. Alright, without wasting any time let's get into it. So log means leave-in, oil and then gel. Okay, so I'm using the Ashpa leave-in today. The formula is quite light, which is why this makes a great addition to log styling. Whenever you have a leave-in conditioner that you feel is too light for you, it is always a good idea to layer it. The formula does not bunch up or pill at all and so distributing it evenly is no problem at all. You won't have to rake or comb your hair either to distribute the product. And so for application, I'm using the roping technique and praying hands, really pressing that leave-in into the sections of my hair and creating some tension while I do so. A lot of people will argue that raking products into your hair will cause stringy looking clumps. However, sometimes when products spill up on the hair, combing and raking becomes super necessary. But with the Ashpa leave-in, it is so liquidy and it's so light that you won't have any trouble distributing the product. Roping and praying hands are sufficient. Okay. So I have high porosity hair, therefore I'm going to use a combination of oils that best suit my hair. I'll talk more about the best oils to use when you're doing log later on in this video, so stay tuned for that. I'm using Jamaican black castor oil and olive oil, but I'm only going to use one drop of the Jamaican black castor oil because this oil is super duper heavy, okay? All right, using half a pump of the olive oil. Log used to freak me out a lot before, but if you use a teeny tiny bit of oil, then you might really enjoy this method. Going to start creating my clumps. I usually apply my products on damp hair and then just before creating my clumps, I add more water. All right, so vertical sections, comb from the front and then ribbon from the back. So style section by section. I've created four sections in total, two at the bottom, two at the top. So apply gel i'm using praying hands for gel then i'm gonna scrunch i'm gonna smooth down the frizz if i see any okay check out my grip here my hands are like a pair of scissors this will free up my second hand to do other stuff if you want i'll make a detailed tutorial on this for now say hello to my edward scissor hands moment all right now for some gel Okay, scrunch, 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 scrunch. Look at those clumps. Whew, perfection. Super even clumps and not one bit of frizz. I love it. This is why I love creating clumps with a comb versus the rake and scrunch technique. I'll make a video for a comparison soon. All right, anyway, to tackle the top sections, I'm gonna comb in an upward direction. This is gonna give me some serious root lift and volume. Channeling Edward Scissorhands again. Now to apply some gel to those top two sections that I just styled. Look at that root lift. Amazing. Okay, so this is the second time I'm applying gel, but this time I'm gonna focus most of the gel on the crown of my head. Now turn from side to side, shake and release, scrunch. At this point, you're looking for that pasty feeling. So your hair should feel slimy, gloopy. It should feel like seaweed. Also, look at that lift. 
just look at it chef's kiss okay okay let me plop for 30 minutes and be back so sometimes plopping can give you some frizz right in case that happens just do this when you take the plop off get the top sections wet again or wherever you see frizz just get those sections wet pat the area down with water not a lot of water just take as much as you need and just pat down the flyaways now take a teeny tiny bit of mousse I'm using the enlivened mousse here. Apply this to the sections that you just got wet. I'm not scrunching at this point at all. Just keep patting down till the mousse vanishes. Okay, let my hair dry and then I'll be right back. So my hair is completely dry now. And can you see how it has this slight little lift? on the roots and I've achieved this without root clipping. All right, so listen, when I use root clips, it's a very good method of getting root volume. But every time I go to take the root clips out, it is so difficult. I'll end up pinching my hair, I'll end up breaking my hair. So this method works well for me. As you can see, there's a bit of natural lift at the roots. So let me scrunch out the crunch and then we'll talk. I have a whole bunch of oils here that I bought to test and I'm gonna be using one of them. I think I'm gonna go with the argan oil. Four drops. Okay, so this is what the hair is looking like. Just look at the gloss, look at the shrinkage. If you look at the shrinkage that I've gotten on the underside of my hair, where my hair is not that damaged, right? Because mostly I used to run through with a straightener on the top sections. So if you look at the bottom sections, can you see the difference in the shrinkage? I've not compromised on volume. As you can see, the gloss is unreal. The shrinkage is crazy, especially in the areas that I don't have too much damage, like the under sections right here. You can see that this is like a totally different curl pattern that is emerging in my hair. Sometimes our curls are not like a uniform 2A or a 2B or a 3C. The more you go through CGN, the more you'll realize. As you can tell, the frizz can we see the frizz? There's hardly any frizz today. And the hair is incredibly shiny. So after my last video, a lot of you asked me if I cut my hair, but that's not true. I haven't cut my hair. It's just that whenever I use oil, I introduce oil to my routine in any way. I notice that my shrinkage is unreal. My gloss is unreal. Not to say that my hair feels sticky in the least. In fact, let me show you what my hair looks like on day two. So I'm done working out and look at all of the definition I still have on my hair. And honestly speaking, I would attribute this solely to the oils that I've used. I would mentioned that I'm going to be taking you through all of the oils that I bought, right? So this is the Moringa oil. This is the apricot oil. And this is the jojoba oil. This is the rosehip oil. This is also very good for the skin. This is the grapeseed oil. This is Moroccan oil. This is the olive oil from Plum. I used this yesterday. This is the Jamaican black castor oil. Okay, so I have a video talking about the oils that would suit you if you have high, medium and low porosity hair. Essentially, remember it this way. Low, G-A-R medium bv and high porosity oj so i'll link all of the oils that i found on amazon including the ones that i have currently down in the description and they're not expensive at all i think they range from 180 to around 220 rupees but yeah just the fact that i used oil look at the definition that i'm retaining this is d2 hair and very honestly, there is very little that I have to do to it. 
as you can see it is retained moisture it is retained definition look at the shrinkage the shrinkage is unbelievable so this is post workout i just finished working out there's nothing that i need to do to my hair just now maybe before going to sleep i could use like the grape seed or the jojoba oil and just take like one drop or two drops of it and just very lightly glaze my hair with it but when you're using these oils you really don't need that much one drop or two drops would be fine treat them like serums but since serums are essentially i spoke about this yesterday serums essentially are silicone that is what gives your hair that shine right we can't use serums if you're following cgm at least i don't use silicones so yeah the best bet would be to use some oil so when you're using these oils please make sure you're just using a drop or two drops very honestly that should be sufficient for you you really don't need more than that well start with a drop and then see if your hair could stand more because things could go awry very quickly and if you use too much then your hair will become stringy and weird and sort of wiry and oily and you really don't want that which is why i would say look i have the jamaican black castor oil here but i'm not going to use that as a serum on my hair at all because it is very very heavy so i'm going to arrange all of these oils from heaviest to lightest and when i'm focusing on using these oils like a serum so on second third fourth day I'm going to use an oil that penetrates the hair shaft. I'm not going to use something like olive oil and castor oil that sit on top of the hair. Maybe some of you with extremely high porosity could get away with it, but look, the Jamaican black castor oil here is quite heavy, so I would not use something like that. I'd probably go with grape seed because it is one of the lightest oils that penetrate the hair shaft. So, yep, let's see how I do it. Quite literally, I'm just going to take one drop. As you can see I hardly have any frizz and I'm very very positive and very very certain that I'm going to be able to make these results last and I'm going to be able to stretch out my wash day to at least 7 days. It'll look great for the first maybe 4 5 days and then after that obviously it's not going to look the same but still using this method very very honestly is my best bet because as you can see the shrinkage so using oil in my routine is insane for my hair especially when i'm looking to retain moisture because as you can see my hair is held up very very well and this is post workout hair and yep i will see you tomorrow this is what my hair looked like on day 3 yesterday my hair went fully through it because I had a long day i was out with zulu in the car on my lap um my hair unprotected against the seat of the car fully squashed and squished my hair is not the best today so that's okay day 3 hair i think i want to use the moroccan oil I still don't think it's bad. Very honestly, the camera is still not picking up how shiny and how glossy it looks in real life. All right, so that is it for today. I have a long day of editing coming up, and Colin sent me there. pineapple keeper so when i edit i'm going to use this i'm going to wear this so this is how i'm going to keep my hair when i'm editing because mostly when i edit i'm against 
the back of the bed in fact yesterday when i was in the car i should have had this on but i didn't stop to think that i need it so yeah today i have a workout i mean i'm gonna be working out in an hour and then after that mostly i'm gonna be editing so when i edit i'm gonna use this and i'll let you guys know how it held up yeah i don't see this as being super uncomfortable or anything i can push this back if i want it's really cute actually so yeah i'm gonna be editing with my pineapple keeper on so i'm editing so yeah since i edit and when i edit i have my head against the bed right i generally don't have a way to protect it but what i've done is i've just sort of pull this up i mean you can pull it down and you can pull it up and yeah this is how i have my head and you know what since this is so loose i don't even feel like i don't feel awkward i don't feel like something is like sort of you know restricting me and that is honestly a feeling that triggers my migraines but with this it's so loose that i'm not feeling restricted and i'm not feeling like all like squashed up so i've had this on for hours now but yeah what i would say is don't keep this on your forehead you don't want the product from your hair building up on this over time and then it's sort of giving you breakouts here so yeah just keep it up and all in all i think this is super comfortable and i would super vouch for this it was quite gimmicky okay when i saw pineapple keepers i was like yeah that is so gimmicky but whenever i see a product that's super gimmicky it's like it's like a guilty pleasure right we all want to try them which is why i really wanted to try this product and guys i really really like this you know i i can see myself using this quite a bit all right it's night time i should see you tomorrow morning bye this is what my hair looked like on day four This is what my hair looked like on day 5. This is what my hair looked like on day 6. If you're struggling to retain moisture or if you're using a leave-in that is not heavy enough for you, then I feel like this routine would be the answer. As you can see, I've managed to retain moisture in my hair for a long time and I would attribute all of that to these oils. Okay, so let's talk about serums. Now the deal is that the ingredient that makes your hair shine, right, in normal traditional serums, that would be the silicone that is infused in the serum. But since on CGM we're not really supposed to use serums, you'll notice that most of the serums on the market today are some form of oil. But they also come with a very significant price tag. Most of these oils, in fact all of these oils are I think under 200 rupees or maybe max to max 250. I would say please don't use too much oil because if you use too much oil then you're going to have greasy sticky hair and if you overdo it then you'll notice that when you're trying to prolong your wash days your hair will become super stringy and weird. Alright so that was it. I'll leave everything that I used in this video down below. Definitely check out the oils and guys I'm looking for your recommendations. I'm trying to look for products that are affordable. If you have any recommendations for CG friendly, cruelty free shampoos and conditioners, let me know. Leave me your suggestions down below and I'll definitely try them. Alright, that was it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up, 
leave me a comment because it helps my videos get more engagement that way youtube recommends my videos and my videos get more reach so thank you so much for your support guys thank you so much for watching my name is michelle and i'll see you in the next one bye